the crowd It's way, way too loud He wants to think out loud Get away from the crowd So don't gather round him tonight He sits down to ponder But last things wonder why he's here Alive Cause so many fast him When they should have been here instead of him Kohima is the hilly capital of India's northeast state, Nagaland, with a population of about 100,000, is the second largest town in Nagaland after Dimapur. It officially became the capital after the state of Nagaland was inaugurated in 1963. All tourists and travelers looking for exotic adventure and experience enters Naglan through Kohima and the predicament of short holiday, long travel time, ambition to explore more given the variety of choices available here at Kohima can be cumbersome. So let's break it down to suit all travelers' desires and possibilities right here at Kohima. Museum is perhaps one of the best and easiest way to get information about a particular place and its people, the culture and the history. I'm here at the Nagaland State Museum, which has been run by the Directorate of Art and Culture. This is one place where you will get first hand or a good sense of the people and culture and its traditions which will help you to explore and discover more of a particular place that you are visiting. So I'm here at the Nagaland State Museum. This museum is opened all working days, Monday to Friday and all working Saturdays. The Directorate of Art and Culture runs the Nagaland State Museum and is finely curated in beautiful galleries. A visitor can pay a nominal fee to explore and discover the display of relics and artifacts, an authentic insight into the tribals of Nagaland at the Nagaland State Museum. Nagaland State has 11 districts inhabited by 16 major tribes including many other sub-tribes speaking on languages and dialects with unique customs and ethnic attires. Naglan is a rich and diverse land of culture and traditions, a heaven for any experiential adventurers. Naga society was predominantly an agrarian society. The display of rudimentary agricultural tools and the exalted gears signify the modest and rustic life of the Nagas. The simple yet practical paraphernalia of the Nagas like the spade, hoe, weeding basket, broom, rain cover, grinders and storage, the indigenous bamboo comb, natural organic shampoo, jackfruit brush, miniature containers, all displayed for the information of the visitor.
the display of Naga men in different professions, some as a warrior, some as blacksmiths and craftsmen, while others at work in the agricultural field or hunting are all a good peep into the traditional life of a Naga, which in the border areas even today is not much different than shown in the museum. The real skull trophies taken during actual headhunting raids displayed in the museum is perhaps the star attraction to the curious and imaginatively high traveler. Headhunting was universally practiced by the Nagas. The taking of the head in a war earned the warrior an exalted status of fame, honor, and glory both in this world and life after death, so the legend goes. Traditional machetes and spears, display of shields made of elephant hides and skins, takes us back into times of brave warriors, mortal combats, creepily beautiful despite little until the guns were discovered. <laughs> The photo gallery is also another interesting section in the State Museum. The frozen moments of yesteryears capturing the different shades of Naga lives, historic moments, the struggle, the destruction and pain of World War. The premise of the State Museum also has some interesting story to tell if you look carefully. The old remnants of World War II, the stone sculptures of majestic mitoons and log drums are some of the things that a curious visitor may like to check out. The park developed by the Indian Museum Kolkata at the entrance to the premise of the State Museum is another beautiful space for children to explore into the diversity of India and its belief systems and mythology. Given the time and given the schedules, you can visit Pulebadze Trail, you can go to Dzuku, you can visit Konoma, Zileke, you can explore the Naga Heritage Village where the famous Hornbill Festival is held annually, 1st December to 10th December. Some of the nearby villages that you can visit, Jakama, Kigwema and Kejakeno Village, where you can also go and experience Chida Lake. So let's explore more. A walk through the lanes of local bazaars in Kohima town is a must-do for all tourists. 
This is the perfect place to get a glimpse of the culinary habits of the local people. The gastronomic traveler will find in the local market full of organic greens and vegetables. The gourmet foodie should find something special from live frogs and fishes, escargots, snail, larvae, tree worms, bamboo worms, bees to special organic beans and fruits and wild mushrooms. local souvenir shop is another place of interest for a tourist to visit. Nagas, being diverse in their culture and traditions, have colorful ethnic attires and ornaments. The bags and shawls, the curious little souvenirs and the beautiful bead necklaces are something one must check. Although I must admit that bargaining is not much of a bargain on this side of our country. On 6 May 1944, during the Second World War, this tank, under the command of Major Ezra Roots, was climbing the Kohima Ridge to support the Second Division, who were attacking the Japanese position at the Garrison Hill. Under the treacherous monsoon condition, the tank slipped down the hill and crashed upon a tree, where the crew came under enemy's fire. So the crew set the tank's machine gun to continuously fire by jamming the trigger and set the turret to rotate, and they escaped back to British lines. After the battle, the second division requested the tank remain in the exact position from which it had been abandoned as a memorial to the heroism and sacrifice of all those who fought in the battle. The Kohima War Cemetery is being constructed on the actual battleground where one of the fiercest battles of World War II was fought. Thousands of Allied and Japanese force perish in this battle. The memorial to the troops of 2nd Division below the cemetery has become famous for its inscription exhorting the survivors to tell those at home that for your tomorrow we gave our today. The World War II battle is referred to as the Stalingrad of the East.
The Battle of Kohima is the turning point of the Japanese offensive into India in 1944. The troops who fought in India and Burma called themselves the Forgotten Army. But well, in 2013, the British National Army Museum voted the Battle of Kohima Impal as Britain's greatest battle. Kohima was picked over more celebrated battles of D-Day and Waterloo. The tennis court was perhaps the scene of the most bitter fighting of the whole Burma campaign when a small allied force held out against repeated attacks by the Japanese force. The fiercest hand-to-hand -hand fighting took place in the garden of the deputy commissioner's bungalow around this tennis court. The cherry tree at the end of the tennis court is of historical interest. The original tree was used as a sniper's post by the Japanese and was destroyed in the fighting which raged around the tennis court and marked the limit of the Japanese advance into India. The present tree is a shoot from the old stump. There have been many pilgrimages to the Kohima battlefield by those who fought here, by the children of those who fought and died here, by historians and by contemporary soldiers, successors to those who participated in great bitter battle as a Japanese general called it. British and Japanese missions have journeyed to Kohima to honor their death Sometimes British and Japanese veterans have stood together proclaiming a message of reconciliation on the spot where they and their dead comrades engage in mortal combat not of their choosing. They and the inhabitants of Kohima were the sudden victims of history. Present and future generations visiting the memorials to that now distant battle have the opportunity to give a thought and perhaps a tear to the folly and heroism of war. The highest ranking officer in the rank of Brigadier W.H. Goshen of Grenadier Guards is laid here at the cemetery. Two brave soldiers received the Victoria Cross in the Battle of Kohima. J. N. Randall of the Royal Norfolk Regiment and J. P. Harmon of the Queen's Own West Kent Regiment. The Nightingale of the Battle of Kohima to remember is Sister Ethel Carter of Territorial Army Nursing Service and the Chaplain to the Forces, Reverend J. O. Kalagan of the Royal Army Chaplain's Department. Kohima War Cemetery was constructed in memory of officers and men who made the supreme sacrifice during the World War II. On each grave, there are beautiful epitaphs and grave on bronze. Thank you.
I am at the upper deck of the Kohima War Cemetery. And these are the names of those officers and men who died in the battle and whose remains were committed to fire. And these are the soldiers who fought for our freedom. The youngest soldier at the Kohima War Cemetery is Gulam Muhammad of 2nd Punjab Regiment, lost to war at the tender age of 16 years. And the oldest Barkat Ali of the Indian Pioneer Corps at the age of 49. The Battle of Kohima was fought from 4th April to 10th June 1944. It was the turning point of the World War II of the Japanese offensive into India. An epic encounter between two well-matched enemies. A devastating event that visited upon the town of Kohima, then a small hill station. Truly poignant, when you go home, tell them of us, and say for your tomorrow, we gave our today. <laughs>